Hi guys and thanks for tuning in once again. If you're new to the channel, my name's Brett Wood and I'm a professional landscape photographer from Australia. I specialise in landscape photography workshops to New Zealand, Australia and many other international destinations. Today's video, we're gonna delve back into some editing again and in particular in uh, Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw, we're gonna talk about inverting and intersecting masks. This is an absolute game changer in your editing workflow. It's easy to do and it really does make a big difference to your editing landscape photos or any photos for that matter. So without any further ado, we'll go and jump on my computer in the classroom and we'll get started. Hi there guys and welcome to my computer screen. Here on the screen is an image I captured in New Zealand in winter a couple of years ago. Uh, today it's not about a complete editing workflow, it's just about showing you uh, both inverting and, inverting and intersecting your masks within Lightroom or Camera Raw. So let's get straight into it. On the right hand side of the screen here you can see the fourth one down is the masks. If you click on that, um, that's going to bring up your masks and there's all different masks you can use. Um, we're going to use the sky mask, we click that second one and you can see in red we've made a mask for the sky. Now we want to invert that mask. What, I'm, what I normally do is when I edit my photos here is that I break the image down into two separate zones and those zones are the sky as one zone and then the foreground as a separate zone. So this is how you can hone in and uh, just edit the sky by itself or the foreground by itself. So we want to invert the sky, we want it to become a foreground mask. So there's a couple of ways we can invert it but the easiest way by far to invert your mask is just to hit X on the keyboard, the letter X on the keyboard. Hit that and there you go, it's made a mask for the foreground only. That's how easy it is to invert masks and how you can uh, break your, your image down into zones. You can have a zone for the foreground and the zone for the sky and you just go over on the right hand side and continue to make masks. So we might use that as our foreground mask. We could go into the foreground there and um, use a, a tone curve here and just uh, lift up the lights and drop down the mid-tones, you know, something like that, add a real nice punch of contrast to the foreground. We turn that mask on and off, on and off, on and off. You can see that it's only affecting the foreground and not the sky. We could then go ahead and make a mask just for the sky. So back over to Create Mask, select Sky, and then we could go and uh, just affect the sky. We might want to sort of drop down the highlights on the sky or something like that. So that's inverting masks. That's the first tip I wanted to show you today. Pretty simple really, um, but really powerful tool and uh, an awesome way to break your photo down into, into zones, into the foreground and then into the sky. Uh, the next one I'm going to show you is how to intersect your masks and that's, that's the game changer. That's the one that's a really uh, great tool and it gives us the ability to really hone in and uh, edit particular areas within our image. So I'm going to delete those two masks that I just made and we'll go back to starting again. Uh, inverting our mask. So uh, let's make a mask for the sky once again. Select sky. Now let's say we don't want to uh, affect the whole sky. We only want to affect a part of the sky. That's where we can intersect our mask. So where our mask is here on the right hand side where it says mask one to the right of it there's three little dots. If we click on those dots and it's the fourth one down it will say intersect mask with. And then we have the ability to select how we want to intersect that mask. So in this instance let's say we just want to use a linear gradient. We'll pull that linear gradient down from the top. We just want to dark in the top of the sky for example. You can see that when I pull that down it's not affecting the mountain, it's only uh, the mask is only affecting the sky. So we could come over to the exposure and drop down the exposure on the top of the sky like, like so for example. That's intersecting a mask. Let's do another one just so you're getting familiar with it. Actually we'll do a couple. Um, let's do again create new mask. We will do select sky once again. Now we want to invert that mask so we will hit X on the keyboard. That's given us a foreground mask. Now we only want to darken the foreground at the bottom not in the middle. 
So we will uh, once again go up to the mask and on the right hand side where the three dots are, intersect mask with. Uh, this time we will pick brush. Um, we'll come in here with a brush and we'll just brush it into the foreground. We just want to darken the foreground. Um, we could then come up, say, to the curves, for example, and just drop down the, uh, the mid-tone curves like that, for example. Um, and that's another mask, or intersected another mask. Let's make another one. Uh, create new masks. We will select our sky. We will invert that mask, so we'll hit X on the keyboard. Now, let's say we really want to draw a lot of attention to that mountain, and that's what you'd want to do if you're editing this photo. Um, we could intersect the mask with a radial filter. So over here on the mask, three dots, fourth one down, intersect mask with... Let's grab a radial filter or radial gradient as they call it and just draw that in the middle. We might just draw it across the mountain like that, for example. As you can see, it's only highlighting the mountain, not the sky. And then we could come down, say, to the exposure and, say, lift up the exposure on the mountain like so. And that doesn't affect the sky. It's only intersected the foreground layer. I hope you're getting the hang of it and you can see immediately just how powerful these couple of tools are, inverting and uh, intersecting your masks. We've immediately gone from an image that was there to there really, really easily. Um, not hard to do. So I hope you're getting the hang of that. I hope that's going to help you out with your workflow moving forward. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave a comment. Let me know what you thought. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that video and importantly, I hope you actually learnt something out of that video and that it's going to help your photo editing workflow moving forward. As I always say on my YouTube videos, please do me a big favour, go ahead and leave a comment. Uh, if you like my content, please consider subscribing to my channel. Stay tuned in the future for another video coming soon. It'll either be another one of these quick little editing tips or an out in the field landscape photography vlog. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about my landscape photography workshops, head over to my website. I'll put a link down in the comments or in the uh, show notes for this video and check out my photography workshops. Until next time, take care of yourselves. Don't take life too seriously and uh, we'll see you again real soon.